reed pedals. We're going to be talking about these today and swapping some out. How long should you run them before you swap them out? What brands you should use? This, that, the other thing. Well, let's see how long I ran them on this bike. Or should I say my wife ran them? 191 hours. This is my wife's bike and hers are original so 192 hours original hours we're gonna pull them out see how they look and uh, swap in some new OEM ones and these suckers are expensive right here I paid like 138 total for two of them and that's they're just they're pretty expensive OEM ones yes I could have went with the Boyson Pro Stock there's all kinds of other options we'll talk about that in a minute um, let me go ahead and start pulling this thing apart and see what we got got the seat the tank off and pulled off the silencer also removed the lower subframe bolts because I'm on, going to loosen up the back of the uh, the boot to the back of the carburetor right here and just swivel the subframe up to get it off the carburetor and then I can pull that carburetor out of, out of there easily and get access to the reeds There we go, as far as I need to take it back. Uh, now let me go ahead and remove this, uh, loosen this clamp up right here so I can pop the carburetor off. And try to fish it out of here. We got all these hoses. I'll just pull them out nice and gently. Let the carburetor hang off to the side. All right, we have full access to these reeds now. Let this air ratchet do all the work for me. Got one more down here. Oops, that fell off. All right. We got the intake boot right here. Got some dirt on the edge of stuff. We'll get. We'll take care of all that. And the reed cage. Let's go ahead and just slide that on out of there. All right, quick glance. Doesn't look. Oh, sorry. Quick glance. Quick glance does not look like there's any chipping or anything. So, uh, well, that's good. Let me hold it up to the light. All right, let me put a stick of light behind it to see if we can see some light through the cracks. Maybe here or there. Yeah. Nothing major though. They're actually looking really good. Reed pedals are looking great, so that brings the question why even replace them? The reed pedals, you know, they flex to open, and uh, after a while they kind of fatigue, they lose their snap. Um, some, some of the reed companies, aftermarket reeds, sell different tension. They have a high, low, and a medium. The high tension is typically for better top end and the low is for a better bottom end but long story short these reed pedals change through time they, they, they become easier and easier they lose their tension through time so what might start out as a as a top end oriented reed pedal 
might if you leave it in the bike too long could end up being a low end oriented reed pedal even though there's no chips or anything like that and on some bikes as they get i found uh, on a lot of bikes as they get soft and easy it even can start changing your jetting they typically want to go richer they, they start acting richer as the reed pedals lose their tension i'm trying to see if i can get that out of there we don't have to but i'm just trying to see if i can now why am i replacing these with stock on her bike why not get some boyson carbon fiber reeds or pro series which are great reeds um she doesn't ride her bike very hard and uh, she got basically almost 200 hours out of the stock reed so i don't want to change anything i just want to freshen it up so on her bike since she likes the way it performs and it's doing good for her i'm just i'm just trying to freshen it up i don't want to change anything and because she runs the reeds she can run them so long it's worth paying the god what was it 138 dollars i'm not even kidding you either look 64 dollars each two combined is 138 dollars with tax included for the replace, re price of OEM replacements, we could have just got the V-Force 4R, right? I will say the beauty of these is replacement pedals are between $50 $60 instead of $138. Or the cheapest route altogether, I would say, would be the Boyson Superstock Carbon Fiber Reeds at $46. I mean, there are cheaper out there, but not stuff that I would want to trust. Some stuff that's like cut out of cardboard on eBay. But I'm not dogging eBay. I buy a lot of stuff on eBay. So, uh, yeah. Don't think I'm dogging eBay. I like eBay. You, just, you do have to be cautious. They they definitely got some Chinese knockoff stuff on there. So be real careful. Especially if you're going to purchase a reed valve. Don't think, oh crap, I found a $40 reed valve. Uh, uh, V-Force reed valve on eBay. They have knockoffs on there right now. So if you go the reed valve, uh, the V-Force reed valve route, be sure to order from somewhere like Motosport, Rocky Mountain. You know, someone replica. Make sure you get an OEM one. But all right, so we got these $138 reed pedals here, and we're going to put it on here. Now, like I mentioned, they get tired after a while, and, and uh, they, they fatigue, and they open up easier. And uh, what happens is, if you go in the forums and you read, like, what performs better, the rad valve, the V-Force, or the stock reeds, or whatever, what, what reeds perform best? And you'll hear a lot of people talk about that they put a V-Force reed on their bike, and it just performs great. Or they put a... You know, you have that one person that says he put them on, it performs much better. You have the other person that puts it on and says he didn't notice anything. I think a lot of times it has to do with the condition of their current reeds. I believe some people wait until these are bad and then they put it on and then they feel a difference. Because sometimes just getting rid of the old reeds and replacing them with just the same ones that were in there, you're going to feel a difference. So, obviously if you pull out an old reed block, stock reed block, and put in a V-Force, you might feel a difference. That being said... In the next week or two, I will be ordering me a V-Force reed valve. Now that I found out that these pedals are $138 replaced, that's okay on her bike because she'll run it for two and hours. But for me, I'm going to burn through reed pedals in probably 50 hours the way I ride. I keep my bike rung out versus her. It's just, it's always tapped out when I'm riding. And she rides more in the bottom mid. I mean, she revs it out, but not, not as much as I do and not for as long. Obviously, that's why she got 200 hours out of these reeds, but I expect to only get 50. And I don't want to have to pay um, $138 for, for a, a set every time, every 50 hours. I could very easily go this route. And that, that's, a, um, you know, that's an option. I will consider that. However, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to order the V-Force 4R because I can get replacement pedals for 50 to 60 bucks. So every 50 hours, I can replace it for 50 to 60 bucks. Now, I will be putting this on the bike, doing a full review on it in the next week or two. Full to test and tune, see how it does. If I don't like the way it does, I will pull them out, put the stock back in, and then when the stock wear out, I'll try out these. But if I do put them in, and I dig it, or at least if it's equal to stock, if it's equal, then that's okay. It dropped the price of a reed pedal replacement down to, to 50, 60 bucks, so that's good. If it's better, that's real good. If it's worse, I will pull them out. If I don't like these, I will pull them out and they will be on eBay and they will be authentic. Because I refuse to leave anything on my bike that I don't like the way it performs. I try to do one change at a time and if I don't like it, I back out of it. But let's get to changing them out. If you're doing a stock reed cage like this, you're replacing with stock reed pedals, what I like to do is loosen these screws up a little bit on bikes and I try to figure out from the stock because there's a little bit of slop. Right? If you loosen it up, there's a little bit of slop in that reed stop. See that little bit of play right there? And also in the reed pedals. 
I found Yamaha presses these all the way inward. So when you go to tighten up the new ones, you press the reed pedals up towards the, the mounting screws and the reed stopper up towards them. And then you tighten the screws up. And that you'll at that point, you'll be putting it right back to where it was right from the, uh, the factory. Um, obviously, that's, you know, this just OCD in it. But you can change the performance of reeds ever so slightly by positioning the reed stop a little bit differently or the reed pedals. And we're just trying to mimic the stock performance here. Now on this, you'll see there's a mark right here. Or this, uh, they, they cut the corner off the reed pedal right here. I mean the reed stopper. If you notice, the reed pedal has that same little corner cut off right here, but it's rounded on that side. So that's an indicator of which direction these new ones are supposed to go. Let's pop these out. All right. Like I said, they look good, and they're gonna look good. So I know some people like to wait until they completely crack and fray to replace them. And I mean, if you're on a budget and um, you don't mind cracking a reed in the middle of a ride, then there's nothing wrong with that. I like to have my jetting consistent and my performance consistent, so I prefer to replace them um, while there's, you know, before they go bad. I like to keep the tension up on them, and not let them wear out. Ooh, that was a tough one. So let me go ahead and swap these out, and we'll put her back on the bike. Ah, oh, so shiny and new. Let's not forget some Loctite on these screws. You don't want them things coming you loose. Yes, I'm putting the red stuff on. It might be difficult to get them back out in the future, but I'd rather have them difficult to come out than when I want them to come out than to have them come out when I don't want them to come out. I usually can get them out. Not a big deal. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to push the reed pedals up towards the mounting bolts and also the reed stop. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you just use your thumb like I'm doing here. Be careful not let your screwdriver slip off the Phillips and blast right through your $138 set of reed pedals. Alright, let me tighten her down real good and we'll move along. There it is, all freshened up. And if I hold it in the light, there's not an ounce of light coming through these things looking good. But these Yamaha reed pedals, gasket, uh, there are no gaskets. That little rubber ring is the gasket. And then this, that rubber ring is the gasket. So there are no paper gaskets for these. You just bolt them back in. Reed cage back on the bike. And the carburetor's back on with the hoses ran all nice and pretty down the back end. Let me continue to put the subframe bolts back in, seat tank, silencer. Now let's fire her up. Oh, quick commercial, little uh, tech tip. On your number plates, you'll see there's two places where your bike mainly gets its intake for the air filter, the air intake. It's a little spot back here by the rear fender, and these holes right here, and then obviously the water drain at the very bottom of the air box, which is not that big, but it, it does flow a little bit. But you'll see that they, you see the ho hole is not completely cut out right here, and it's pretty easy. See, I already did it this one. Look at that. Get a little more airflow. And it's really easy to do. All you have to do is just take a razor blade take your time make sure it's a sharp razor blade start and just cut from the back end don't cut from the front end first what I do is I cut these little parts right off here I'm gonna do this one right here in front of you so you'll see how it's done now now that I cut down the side of this of this wall right here and this wall right here next thing I'm gonna do is well let me try to get you up a little bit closer here that's the next thing I'm gonna do now I'm gonna run down these two walls with the razor all, from all the way to this top corner down to that one and all the way in this top corner down to this one again make sure you got a really good nice sharp razor for this there you go that's that one that one after you do that all you have to do is just pop this out right here 
and just usually just pull it off. Now let me grab it with something. And there it is. Well, I'll clean it up a little bit. Looks like I went high here, kind of rushing for the camera, trying to make it look fast and easy instead of taking my time. There it is. You can see there's still a little bit more material up in here. I'll sit in there and work that off with the razor and make it a little bit better like this one. And there you go, increasing airflow to your air filter right there, quick and easy. Here we go, first fire up with new reed pedals. Good and warm now. She sounds to be running good. Well, that's pretty much a wrap for this video. Swapped out the old reed pedals with some brand new OEM ones. Stay tuned for in another week or two. I'm going to be putting a set of V-Force reed pedals, the 4R, on my YZ125 and see how that does. On that one, I have the head modified with uh, 32,000 squish bands clearance and a full pro circuit exhaust system on it. So let's see when I get there. Let's see if the reed, if the V-Force reed pedals actually make an improvement on that bike, or is it just gimmick or what is it let's find out so i appreciate you guys watching this um if you haven't already clicked subscribe please do i will be keeping this content coming and hope you guys have a good weekend of riding catch you guys later